This is what the World Health Organization actually says. It is recommending to governments in the world that if people, members of the public, cannot keep a distance of more than um, of, of a meter, of at least one meter, not two meters, one meter. This is what the World Health Organization says. It says then we recommend that members of the public wear masks. Where does it say that the moment you go out of your house, for the rest of the day, no. until you go back home, unless you are in your car, you have to wear a mask. Where does the World Health Organization say that? Where is the science? Not only is there no science, but there is even a recommendation by the World Health Organization. So imagine we are in a situation where we all know this, that if you are on the beach alone, sunbathing, or a couple who live together, or a family, or if you are walking in the countryside, yes, then you have to wear a mask. And you're all alone. Where is the science? Let's face it. We know that there isn't a science. How can anyone argue in any logical or scientific way that I am helping to reduce the transmission of a disease because I am wearing a mask all day long, even though I am walking in the countryside on my own, or I'm a farmer in my, in my, in my fields, working in my fields, okay? Or pruning the trees or doing something, or I'm, I'm sunbathing on the beach. And what about going swimming when you're on the beach? What do you do then? Because you need to take off your mask. But do you know that the law does not make any sense at all in this respect? Because it doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do. It tells you're not allowed to remove your mask. So if you remove your mask and put it on your bathing towel in order to go into the water to swim, you are breaking the law. Because from your towel to the to the sea, to the beach, sorry, to the water's edge, you have not had a mask. But do you know that even if you are in the water, you are breaking the law? Now, can someone in the public health um, department explain to us whether we should be wearing a mask when we are swimming? Now, the law says you don't have to wear a mask if you are doing intense exercise. But if you are just swimming and bathing in the water, maybe even halfway in, or fast, it's not intense fast exercise. Walking, fast so, walking, fast walking, fast walking. Or fast example. walking. Who, who I can't is go to walking, decide I can't run. what I have is an injury. intense exercise? Is a warden going to decide if it's intense exercise or not? So if you are swimming normally, it would not be intense exercise. So you are breaking the law. And no one can say, no, but you're in the sea. Yes. But the law does not say that if you are in the sea, it doesn't count, because the laws apply to the territory of Malta. And if you are on the, in the sea, in a bay, that is part of the territory of, war, of, of Malta, because those are what's called the inland waters. The inland waters are part of the territory of Malta. So you are still breaking the law. And yet if your mask gets wet, it's useless. So you see, how can they say that we are being irresponsible? Who is being irresponsible? The government. We make no allegations. In my profession, I'm a lawyer by profession. We like to ask questions. You know, when, when uh, experts take the stand and they take the oath and they start um, explaining in court, we like to get up and we don't make any allegations. We just ask them questions. We call it cross-examination. That's what we do. That's exactly what we did with the judicial protest. So the questions we are asking, you cannot say we are right or we are wrong, because someone who asks a question is neither right nor wrong. He's just asking a question. And we need to see the answers. So our question is, how can you justify that wearing a mask all day long, even though you're alone, even if you are on the beach, even if you are going to swim, even if you're walking uphill, because who is to decide what is intense exercise? You know, every law, not just in Malta, all over the world, 
the first or the second article. The first article is usually the name of the law. This is X, Y, Z. The second article is definitions. Because if you don't have definitions, how can you make a law? But this regulation has no definition. So with all due respect to the medical community, you cannot rush into making all these new regulations. Because lawyers who are making laws know that when you draft a law, you have to be very careful and very precise, and you have to think it through very, very carefully. But unfortunately, the medical community that has been behind many of these regulations has not done this. So they simply said, intense exercise. But this law did not define what intense exercise is. So, for me, walking might not be intense exercise, but for someone who is elderly, or might have a condition, or might be a bit overweight, or is carrying heavy things, or is going uphill, it is an intense exercise. How can you say that is not intense exercise? Who is to decide? So if walking can be intense exercise, then where, are, where does that leave us? That means that, technically speaking, if we are walking, right now we are sitting down. But if we are walking, then we should remove the mask, because for us it might be intense exercise. Who is going to decide? Is, is the warden or a policeman going to decide whether it's intense exercise for you or not? Do you have to go to court to, to explain to the tribunal, um, for me this was intense exercise because I, I, I was out of breath? Okay, I, I go and play football. So I am supposed to wear a mask when I walk onto the football pitch. And the moment I leave the football pitch, I'm supposed to wear it again. But after anyone who plays intense exercise knows that for the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're out of breath. Especially if you've, you've done a good workout and you've really tried to win, yes? It doesn't mean that suddenly you're going back to breathing normally because your, your body is still needing to take in um, extra breath. But I am breaking the law. Even though my body is telling me I need more breath, I need fresh air. But the law is telling me, no, I can't, because now you've stopped playing football. So the next 10, 15 minutes, you have to wear a mask. You see, of course it doesn't make sense. And let's face it, the authorities know that we are right. They know. In fact, a few months ago, the superintendent of public health herself said that it's not known as yet what the effect of masks are, whether it is effective. So how is it that suddenly things have changed? Because suddenly, if you go look at a couple of websites, you will see some new studies about masks dated June 2020, July 2020. So is the medical community telling us that we needed to make new studies for masks in June and July because we had no studies about the efficiency of masks in the last 50 years? Did we suddenly need to have certain scientists come up with these new studies to show that masks are effective? Effective? I'm not telling you they are not effective at all. Effective going out the house and spending the rest of the day not taking fresh air. Because this is what they are asking us to do. You don't take fresh air when you are at home. Not like when you are outside. The moment you go outside, you have to wear a mask. So they are telling us you are not allowed to take fresh air. So your body is the one thing that the body is demanding of us more than anything else. It's to take fresh air. More than anything else. You can go days, even weeks without eating. You can go one or two days without drinking. But how many seconds?